Hi, good afternoon. I'm glad to be back with you. I'm sorry that I missed you all last week. Um, I had a migraine most of the week. It um, it happens, and and I um, am not yet in the routine of Wednesdays, and so I um, just missed the schedule. So, but I'm glad to be back this week, and um, I just to give you a little bit of an update. I have spent most of this week on um, my favorite thing, administrative tasks. Um, at one point in my life, um, I said that administrative tasks were uh, not my gift. You know, when you're going into, um, when you're called into ministry, you get to do all of these tests to see what your gifts are. Preaching, teaching, um, encouragement, and administration is one of those gifts that they look at. And, and I kept saying over and over again, administration is not my gift. Administration is not my gift. I think I take that back. Um, I believe that I have learned the gift of administration. Um, reading budgets and reports, um, learning to be organized, staying on task, thinking ahead into the future. Um, I have always loved being spontaneous, moving with the Spirit of God, uh, going where God leads, but um, I have learned to truly appreciate organization um, and a good spreadsheet. So last night we had our church council meeting. Um, we did a lot of work organizing the year ahead. Uh, it's our, it was our first meeting of the year and we looked six months ahead on our calendar. We planned all the way out to the church picnic this summer. Um, if you want to know what's on our church calendar into June, um, you just need to go to washingtonfarmumc.org to the calendar link and you can find it all. Um, now we know that things on the calendar are going to change, but you know, there are some big stuff that just simply are not going to change. Um, for example, we really hope that you are starting to set things aside for the yard sale on May 2nd. Um, now you need to set them aside at home. We don't have any place at, at church for them until April 26th, but um, start cleaning those closets out now. Um, the other thing that we talked about besides calendar stuff is we talked a lot about our budget, um, about our budget last year and how we ended the year, um, and about our, you know, our financial outlook uh, for 2020. Money um, is one of the top reasons that people stop coming to church. Pastors talking about money is one of the it is the top reason that people in our area stop coming to church. And so here I am on Wednesday afternoon at 4.30, uh, the pastor talking about money. In over 15 years of ministry, I have to say that I have really come to appreciate church budgets. A church budget tells the congregation and the community um, what a people of faith truly value. When we put our money in the offering plate, it's not to keep an institution alive. No one really, or no one I know anyways, really thinks on Sunday morning, um, I'm giving my offering to keep the United Methodist Church alive. No. We give our offering because we believe in the work that the church is doing. We believe in the real, tangible, life-changing work. We believe in the work that's done here in this office. When the pastor puts her arms around someone in distress and is praying for them, we know the healing power there. We believe in the power of coffee poured during AA meetings four times a week. We believe in life transformed on Wednesday nights as youth separate marshmallows from Lucky Charms 
and learn a lesson of faith that they're going to carry with them through the rest of the week and every time they sit down to eat a bowl of cereal. I don't know what the lesson was, but they did the activity. When our organist hits the keys on Sunday morning and our choir begins to sing, that is our abundance coming alive in real and tangible ways. Now, our budget is not exciting, uh, at least not to most of us. It doesn't tell a story. It is numbers and columns and percentages. But even in the midst of that, it speaks to the promise of what Christ will do in our midst. We've been talking the last couple of weeks about ways that we let our life speak. We let our life speak in the kindness that we show one another, in the ways that we treat strangers with sacredness. We let our lives speak when we stand shoulder to shoulder with our brothers and sisters who are marginalized and minimized. We let our lives speak certainly in what we say, in how we raise our children, even in how we raise our animals. We let our lives speak in how we use the economic benefits that God has given us. I am so privileged to be able to work with the leadership here at Washington Farm that I get to work with, to sit at the table with them, to talk about the real and tangible ways that, that our budget, these numbers on the page, make a difference in the lives of the people in our community, because they do. And all of our leaders understand that we are making a difference in lives here. All that we do in our lives is connected. There's not a single part of what we do that is not connected. Singing about that this morning as I was sitting here at my desk and um, covered, it's covered in papers, I can't really uh, show you, but um, I'm sitting here thinking about Bible study on Mark, which I'm going to be teaching in a couple of hours. I'm preparing for sermon on Sunday based on Luke 7, 31 through 35 on this idea of abundant life and discipleship that compels us to share with others. It is not a stewardship sermon. I know I just gave you a stewardship sermon. It's not going to be a stewardship sermon. I don't mention money at all. Um, but it is um, going to be about how those of us who have so much often um, go out of our way, uh, have to go out of our way, or called to go out of our way, um, for those who have so much less than, than we do that we have to be intentionally aware of that because abundance in our lives um, is a gift from God um, that we have to be intentional about sharing. Um, I've been rereading re um, Howard Thurman's Jesus and the Disinherited, a very powerful challenge to see the love that Jesus modeled for us as a solution to poverty and racism, a book that had a tremendous influence on Martin Luther King Jr. and his approach to um, the civil rights movement. In the midst of all of this, my mind is preoccupied with how to increase our pledges, um, to the 2020 budget because that number is down this year. A need to make some posts for Instagram and Facebook. Um, make a plan for confirmation. We have three confirmands. And the fact that I haven't yet sent out my family Christmas cards. So that's my week. How is your week? I hope it's going well. I hope that you're accomplishing all that God is calling you to accomplish this week. 
um, I pray that it is filled with grace and peace and all of the things that you have before you, all of the things that are on your desk um, in the coming days ahead. If I can pray for you this week, please let me know how I might do that. And I pray blessings and peace until, until we meet again, my friends. God bless. Amen.